Welcome to Ortho Reports Podcast. Have you ever wondered what really makes for a successful recovery after a hip replacement? Well, you are in the exact right place. Today, we're diving into a really cool study that zeroes in on one specific group of muscles that can make all the difference. Seriously, it's the key to going from a pretty good outcome to a fantastic one. All right, let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about the unsung heroes of your hips, the abductor muscles. These guys are on the outside of your hip, and their main job, stability. I love the analogy they use in the study. Think of them like the rigging on a sailboat's mast. You know, all those ropes and wires. Without them, that mast would just wobble all over the place. It's the same idea with your pelvis. Without strong abductors, everything gets unstable with every single step you take. And that really gets us to the heart of the matter. Any surgery is, well, a big deal for the body and the tissues around it. So what happens to these super important abductor muscles after a hip replacement? And maybe the biggest question of all, is their recovery directly linked to a patient's ability to just get back to normal life? You know, walking, standing, all of it? To get some real answers, a team of researchers set up a study to follow a group of patients through their entire recovery process. The mission here was really twofold. First, they wanted to track, with hard data, exactly how that hip abductor strength comes back over time. And second, they wanted to see if that strength was the missing link, the key that unlocked better function for the patients overall. So who were they looking at? It was a group of 20 patients, with a pretty wide age range from 52 all the way up to 85. They'd all had one of two common procedures, either a total hip replacement or a bipolar hemiarthroplasty. The researchers then checked in with them at these key milestones, four weeks, three months, and then a final check-in at six months after the surgery. Okay, but how in the world do you actually measure something as complex as recovery? Well, they used a really smart combination of dynamic, real-world tests, along with a super precise tool for measuring pure, raw muscle power. So for the functional, how are you moving in the real world part, they used three standard tests. You've got the six minute walk test, which is all about endurance, how far can you go? Then there's the sit to stand test, which measures that lower body strength, how many times can you get up from a chair in 30 seconds? And finally, the timed up and go test, which looks at agility and balance, how fast can you stand up, walk a bit, turn and sit back down. Now, those tests are great for looking at overall movement, but to really isolate the pure strength of just those abductor muscles, they needed something a lot more specific. And that's where the dynamometer comes in. This is a handheld device that's designed to do one thing really well, measure force. They used it to get a really precise reading of the static strength of the hip muscles, giving them a concrete number in kilograms of force. No guesswork here. All right, so the researchers gathered all this data, and when they put it all together, well, the numbers told a pretty amazing story of a six-month transformation. Let's start with that timed up-and-go test. So at just four weeks after surgery, the median time was 32 seconds. And that's our baseline. It shows that in the early days of recovery, a simple task like getting out of a chair is still pretty slow and a bit of a challenge. But now, get this, fast forward to the six month mark, and that time was cut down to just 15 seconds. I mean, that's less than half the time. It's just a huge, undeniable improvement in agility and balance, a clear sign that real function is coming back. Now let's look at another number, the Harris Hip Score. This is a really comprehensive score that looks at both pain and mobility. At four weeks, the median score was 67.5 out of 100. It's, you know, it's an okay star, but it definitely tells us that patients were still dealing with some pretty big limitations in their day-to-day -day lives. But by that six-month check-in, that score had skyrocketed all the way to 96. I mean, wow, that is an incredible result. It points to a near-complete recovery of overall hip function, a huge drop in pain, and it means patients were truly getting their lives back. And this is where it all just comes together so beautifully. Look at this chart. The raw static strength, it more than doubled. The distance they could walk, nearly doubled. The number of sit-to-stands they could pull off, literally doubled. It just perfectly illustrates how all these pieces, from pure muscle power to functional endurance, they all work together to achieve that amazing final Harris hip score. Okay, so the numbers show this incredible improvement, but what does this all really mean? What are the deeper takeaways from all this data? 
Well, one really interesting little detail they found was related to the surgical technique itself. The most common approach, used in 85% of these cases, was the posterolateral one. But the study found that patients who had the lateral approach actually had significantly better static abductor strength by the end of the six months. It's a subtle point, but definitely something that makes you go, hmm. Another cool discovery was this. It didn't seem to matter which of the two procedures a patient had. There was no significant difference in their abductor strength recovery between the total hip replacement and the bipolar hemiarthroplasty. And that suggests that the recovery of these muscles is just fundamentally important no matter what kind of implant is used. So what's the bottom line here? What's the final message that patients and their doctors should really be taking away from this study? Well, the big picture conclusion is actually a really optimistic one. This study confirms that making huge, life-changing improvements, both in raw muscle strength and in your actual day-to-day -day function, is totally achievable within just six months of surgery. And in the end, it all comes back to this. I'm just going to read this quote directly from the article because it sums it all up so perfectly. Hip abductor muscle strength plays a key role in maintaining pelvic stability, facilitating hip movements, and ensuring efficient gait mechanics. In other words, Strong abductors are, quite simply, the foundation for a great recovery, period. Which, of course, leaves us with one final and really important question. If we know how critical these muscles are, and we know they can recover, then the next logical step is to ask, how can we redesign our physical therapy programs to target that abductor strength more effectively? Could we help patients build that strength back even faster? It's a huge question for the future of recovery. Thanks so much for tuning in.